Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to teach you about React portals. I'll go over why they're helpful, when you should use them, and we'll also create a basic modal that's rendered through a portal. Let's start by learning what React portals are. A portal lets you render React components outside of their parent DOM node. For example, if I inspect element on this basic app, you'll see in the body there's a root div and that injects our entire React app. Below that, I have this overlays div and this DOM node is what is actually going to render our modal. So if I toggle the modal here, you'll see that the overlays div now has that modal. It's not rendered in my app. And when I close the modal, the overlays children disappear and nothing gets rendered. So portals allow you to define React components deeply nested within your app here, but when they're actually rendered to the browser, they'll be injected into a different DOM node. The common use case for portals are modals, toasts, tooltips, alerts, or any other sort of overlay that displays over your app. The main benefits of portals are mainly to avoid CSS complexity. For example, here are some issues that you might run into. Say you have this container, and inside you want to render a tooltip when you click a button. If this container has its overflow set to hidden, and you try to render the tooltip, you'll see that it gets cut off here. And that's because the tooltip is being rendered as a child of this container div. And since its parent has the overflow set to hidden, the tooltip gets cut off. In the next example, you'll see that maybe its container has border color. And although the tooltip is visible, the border color still gets put on top of it. Now you could play around with Z indexes, but once your app becomes more complex, it gets harder to manage. Instead, it would be better to render these things outside of their parent div container so that they're not affected by the parent styles. Now let's see how we can actually create portals in our app. I have a basic React app that I created with Beat, and to start the server, I'm going to run npm run dev. Right now, I just have this heading tag and a few icons. Before we begin, let's look at the React docs for how to create a portal. You'll see that they give us a function called create portal, and it takes three parameters. Children, which refer to the JSX that you want to render, and then a DOM node, which will be the parent that you want to inject this JSX into, and then an optional key. In the example code, you'll see that in the JSX, we call create portal, pass it some JSX as the first parameter, and then give it an element that we want to inject this into. In this case, the paragraph tag will be injected into the document body, but in our case, we're going to create a separate div called overlays where we will inject all of our overlays into. Let's begin by creating that overlays div. We'll open up the index.html and under this div with the ID root, we're going to copy that and change the ID to overlays. Now that we have this in the HTML, we can call create portal from anywhere in our app. And as long as we pass it this element, it'll be rendered inside here. So let's go back to our app and Within the JSX, let's open up curly braces and call create portal. As a first parameter, we're just going to give it a paragraph tag, and I'll just say test for now. And the second parameter, we want to give it the DOM node. So let's grab the DOM node above. We'll do const mount element, and that's going to be equal to document.getElementById. And the ID that we defined was called overlays. So we'll use that instead of portal. And then we'll pass in the mount element to create portal. Now if we save this, we should see tests being rendered in our app. And there it is. And within our actual HTML that gets rendered, you'll see that the test text gets rendered in our overlays div and not in our app root. So we know that our portal is working correctly. In our app code, you'll see that we define this test component within our app, but it gets rendered outside of the app into our mount element. And it doesn't matter how far or how deeply nested we are within the React component tree, as long as we give it the mount element, it will always render under the mount element that you passed it. So it makes it really convenient to mount modals or pop-ups deeply nested within your React app. Now let's move this into its own file because we're going to add some more logic. Under source, we'll create a folder called components, and then a file called overlays. And this will handle displaying all of our overlays for our app. In the return statement, we want to call create portal. So we're just going to grab that from here. And then let's copy over the mount element. 
then make sure you import create portal and then let's use this overlays component in our app then if we save everything should still work and our portal should render a test and there we go now let's create the button that's actually going to render an element in our portal because right now this paragraph tag is always rendered but that's not what we want We'll open up the app file and under this heading, we'll create a button. We'll call it toggle modal. And then we want to create a piece of state that's going to track whether the modal is open or not. We'll call the state is open and the starting value will be false. And when we click the button, we're going to set it to true. So we'll pass an on click handler and that's going to call set is open and we'll pass in true. Now let's pass is open into overlays. And then within our overlays, we only want to render this portal or these children if is open is true. So let's destructure is open. Then we'll wrap this in some empty brackets and then we'll render this conditionally. So if is open is true, then render out test. Otherwise, it'll just be an empty fragment which will not render anything. And use state is not defined. So let's just import that real quick. Now, if we click the modal, we'll see that test displays. And if we look at the elements, we'll see that the test is displayed here, but by default, there's nothing rendered within overlays. It's empty. Then once we toggle it, we'll see that the paragraph tag gets injected in. Now let's replace this paragraph tag with our actual modal. Under components, we'll create a file called modal. And then I'm just going to paste in a modal that I created earlier. And if you want to see the styles that are being applied, you can refer back to the app.css. Now let's go back to our overlays. And instead of this paragraph tag, let's output our modal component. So now if we save, you'll see that our modal appears. If I refresh, nothing gets rendered. And once I toggle it, the modal gets injected in. So that looks great, but now I need a way to close it. And in a real world app, you wouldn't typically have state defined at your app level and then have that be passed down throughout your app. You could create a context provider that manages all of your UI state, like which modal is open or if there are any toasts that are open. But I personally like to use a library called Jotai, which makes it really easy and clean to manage your app state. And it's very performant because it doesn't cause unnecessary re-renders to components that don't care about that state. Because right now, anytime is open changes, our whole app will re-render. And once the app grows, that's not going to be very performant. So let's get rid of this state and replace it with Jotai. To store a piece of app state, we need to create an atom. We look at the Jotai docs, we'll see that to create an atom, we call a function called atom and pass it a default state. And then within our components, we can call use atom and pass in the atom that we created above. And this will return the atom value and then an updater function to update the atom's value. So let's come back into our app and under source, we'll create a file called state.jsx. And here we're going to create all of our atoms. So we'll do export const UI atom because it's going to store our UI state. And let's import that from Jotai. And our state is going to be an object. This object will tell us which overlay should be displayed. For example, we'll have a modal. And by default, it'll be null. And then we could add any other properties like toast or alert or any other overlay. Now that we're exporting this UI atom, let's go back into our overlays and use the atom. So we don't care about is open anymore, so we can get rid of that prop. And within the component, let's grab the state of our UI atom. We'll do const UI. We'll grab the first element that it returns and then call use atom. And then we need to pass in the atom that we want to use. We called ours UI atom. So let's import that in. And remember, this use atom function will return something similar to use state where we have state and set state. So now UI will be the object that we defined right here as our atom. So in this check, instead of checking for is open, we'll do UI.modal. And if that's true or if it's set, then we want to render our modal. So now let's save and back in our app, we need a way to update this atom so that UI.modal will be true. So we'll go back into the app and on this button, we need to update that atom. First, let's bring in the state updater function for that atom. 
And if we only care about the updater function and not the actual atom state itself, we can call another hook called use set atom. And then we pass it the same atom that we want to reference, so UI atom. And this is just going to return the updater function itself. So we'll store it in a variable called set UI. And now we can just call set UI in this on click handler here. This works just like set state, where we can pass a function and take in the previous atom state and return a new state that we want it to update to. So let's return a new object, spread the previous atom state, and then set the modal property to true. Now if we save and go back to our app, we should see that when we click the modal button, our modal gets displayed. And there it is in here. Now we need a way to close the modal. I'm going to copy this piece of code right here and go back into our modal, paste that in and import all these variables. And then we need to add the on click handler to this button. And I'm just going to copy the same thing from our app. Except instead of setting modal to true, we'll set it back to null. Now we should be able to close the modal and you'll see that as we open and close the modal, we can see it being rendered and removed from this portal. Now you might want to refactor this code in a real life example, where for your app state, instead of just setting modal to true, you could set it to an object with maybe a modal title and a meta property where you can pass different functions in. And then within your overlays component, you would get the modal config in here and then pass that into the modal. But just for the simplicity of the video, I'm going to just keep it as a Boolean value. So let's undo this. And one more optimization that I wanted to make was in our overlays component, we're not actually using the updater function that comes in as the second param here. And if you're not actually using the updater function, it would be better to call a different hook. And that's called use atom value. We pass it the atom, and now we don't have to destructure it in an array, it'll just return the atom value itself. So that's just one thing to keep in note when you're using Jotai. So now if we save, it should all still work. And there we go. If you guys wanted to create more portals to be used throughout your application, all you'd have to do is go back to the HTML and create more of these mount elements and then reference them anytime that you call create portal. And it makes it really easy to render different components outside of your main application. So that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you haven't already. It would help me out a ton. Let me know in the comments if you have any feedback or what you guys want to see next, and I'll see you in the next one.